Hi everyone, in this video we're going to evaluate the trig functions of quadrantal angles. Now quadrantal angles are these angles such that the terminal side of the angle lies on the y-axis or the x-axis. Uh, for instance, remember in standard position, the angle starts here. It would be an angle that stopped right here, which is at 90 degrees, or pi over 2. Maybe an angle that stopped right here at 180 degrees, or pi, right here at 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2. Or maybe all the way around at 360 degrees, 2 pi. Or we can go this way. An angle went this way, stopped here, terminal side line right there. That would be an angle that's negative 90 degrees, or negative pi over 2. Alright, and we'll start with an example. Finding the sine, cosine, and tangent of pi over 2. Find the cosecant, secant, and cotangent of pi over 2. Now here are the definitions. So to get started, where's pi over 2? That's 90 degrees. So we're talking about an angle that rotated, and its terminal side lies right there, in state of position. So I'll just draw a picture of an angle doing that. The angle starts here. All right. It's going to rotate. Terminal side lying on the positive y-axis. All right, so there's 90 degrees, there's theta. It equals pi over 2, or 90 degrees. All right, now to do this, we can use the definitions. We need a point that's lying on the terminal side, correct? Let's pick an easy point. Let's pick a simple point. How about a point that has a distance of 1 from the origin? See, this point right here, now the x-coordinate is 0, but the y-coordinate is 1. So we'll pick that point. We're going to use 0, comma, 1. x is 0, y is 1. And it's going to be real easy to find the distance here because our distance from origin to that point is going to be 1. We can see it. All right? If you still plug in 0 here, 0 squared plus 1 squared, square root of 1 squared, you know, square root of 1 squared is just 1. So r is going to equal 1 in this problem. I'm going to get all 6 like that. Let's start here. Sine of pi over 2. Okay, y over r. 1 over 1, which is 1. Cosine pi over 2. x over r. 0 over 1, which is 0. Tangent pi over 2. y over x. 1 over 0. Everyone, that value is undefined. So let's write that. UND. Undefined. So the tangent of pi, pi over 2 does not exist. It's undefined. Now for these three, we'll just do reciprocal. Well, 1 over 1 is just 1. Uh, check this out. See, cosine of theta is x over r, okay? Then secant of theta is going to be r over x. And 1 over 0, you bet, that's going to be undefined. Think about it. Reciprocal, 1 over 0, undefined. That cotangent pi over 2, if you do 0 over 1, which would be x over y, you'll just get 0 over 1, which is 0. So the cotangent of pi over 2 is defined. It's 0. <laughs> okay. Now, we can use this technique, this simple technique, right, using a distance of 1 from the origin, line on the terminal side, for any quadrantal angle, whether it's pi or 3 pi over 2 or 2 pi. So... Every time we do that, r will equal 1, correct? So let's keep this simple. All right. Let's keep this really simple. All right. Draw the coordinate plane. X, Y axis. Since we're always going to use a distance of 1, correct? Keeps it simple. Well then, for all quadrantal angles, what we can do is always make this r value 1. Which would make this r squared, 1 squared, 1. And this r value here, 1. So y over 1 is y. This r value 1 here, so x over 1 is x. That'll still be y over x. Now, this equation right here, I'm going to put a box around it. That's the equation of a circle, okay? So that's a circle, and its radius is 1. So I'm just going to draw a circle here. This will make things really easy. What we're saying is, 
any point on this circle, x comma y, x will be the cosine of the angle theta, y will be sine of the angle theta. Keep it really simple, huh? For every point where theta is the terminal side of the angle, such that the angle started in standard position. So I'm going to plot these four key points here. This is the point 0, 1 for this circle x squared plus y squared equal to 1. This would be the point negative 1, 0, being this is x, this is y. This is the point 0, negative 1. And this point right here is the point 1, 0. All right? And this is 90 degrees. I'll get the y out of the way and just put 90 degrees or pi over 2. An angle that stops here, started in you know, initial position right here, along with the positive x-axis. Rotated there, that'd be pi. 3 pi over 2 down here, or 270 degrees. And then 360 degrees, that will be 2 pi. Okay? Which is also 0 radians, or 0 degrees. So, let's evaluate a bunch of these. Sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. I'm going to make a table. Let's do pi over 2. I know we already did it. Let's do it again. Pi. We'll do 3 pi over 2. And we'll do 2 pi. Okay? All right. Remember, everyone, this is 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. All right. And we'll go ahead and evaluate all of these. Well, how do you do this? Well, we can do it like before. Oh, boy, this just makes things easy. Because we're saying this will be the cosine of pi over 2. This will be the sine of pi over 2. That'll be the cosine of pi. That'll be the sine of pi. Recall, we're saying for any point x, y located on this circle, cosine of theta will equal x, sine of theta will equal y, where theta is the angle that started in standard position. Initial side here and the terminal side landed at pi or 3 pi over 2, etc. This will be cosine, this will be sine. This will be cosine, this will be sine. All right, let's start out. What's the sine of pi over 2? 1. Cosine of pi over 2? 0. What's the tangent of pi over 2? We have to do y over x. Okay? y over x. Don't forget that. And notice the tangent of theta being y over x is actually sine of theta over cosine theta, which is a true identity. All right? So 1 over 0, undefined. You can just divide right there in our table. All right, sine of pi, 0. Cosine of pi, negative 1. Tangent of pi, 0 over negative 1, 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2, negative 1. Cosine of 3 pi over 2, 0. Tangent of 3 pi over 2, negative 1 divided 0, undefined. And lastly, how about the sine of 2 pi, 0. Cosine of 2 pi, 1. 10 into 2 pi, 0 divided by 1, 0. Such an easy way to evaluate the trig functions of quadrantal angles, okay? And, I mean, we can go on and on. How about, uh, what's the sine of negative pi over 2? Well, that's an angle in standard position that rotated 90 degrees this way. So it'd be right here. Sine negative 1. <laughs> right? Or what's the cosine of negative pi? Well, negative pi is an angle in standard position that rotated, rotated clockwise, right? Clockwise. Rotated clockwise. Its terminal side landed right here. So the cosine of negative pi will be negative 1. All right? Not too bad, huh? Oh, and you're here and you need to, I need the secant, okay, of pi. Well, secant of pi is just going to be 1 over 
the cosine of pi. And 1 divide that negative 1 equals negative 1. All right. And lastly, let's do another one. How about the cotangent of 2 pi? All right. Well, cotangent of 2 pi. Tangent of 2 pi is 0. Cotangent of 2 pi would be 1 over 0, which is undefined. Okay. Not too bad, huh? You can actually use this approach to find trig functions of all angles. The only thing you have to be careful of, it's real simple when, it, when the terminal side lies right on the x or y axis. But if you're like, well, what about a point like right there? Let's say the, the angle started here, standard position, and rotated this way, and let's say that was 60 degrees. Well, yeah, but if the radius is one over one, think about it. We're familiar with the special right triangle 60 degrees, 30 degrees, 90. And we, there's our special right triangle, but see, now that radius right there is 1. That distance would be 1 if we were using this approach. And so what you'd have to do is just, well, divide all these so you get a 1 there. <laughs> so I divide them all by 2. Now that kind of represents this. And you'd say, all right, so this distance right here would be this 1 half. This distance right there, everyone, would be that square root of 3 over 2. And you'd say, oh, okay, I want to find the... Uh, the cosine of the 60 degrees using this approach. Well, cosine is going to be what in terms of 60 degrees? It's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, or in this case, it'll be this x over r, right? With the r being 1. So it'll just be x, and you're like, well, what am I getting right there? We're using that 1, you're just getting 1 half there for that value. But recall that's how we found it before. All right. So that's it.